Gamers, today on Get Good With Beastie, amazing series. We're checking out how to come back in AoE 4 and kind of explain my thought process behind comebacks and what you can try to do to come back in your games, no matter what elo you are. You know, there's some things to focus on and some things you can do and hopefully it helps you out. So this is uh, my game from a tournament versus Bruh. Uh, he's a very high ranked player. And this was in Golden League round two, Dry Arabia. This is game number one between the two of us. And this was a game where I was very, very hard, far behind. Uh, I think I was in a very bad spot, but with a couple of little moves, a couple of little tricks, I slowly, slowly started come back, coming back into the game. And I feel like a lot of my games these days are me getting far behind because uh, I'm greedy and then I slowly crawl back so that's something I need to hopefully prevent before it happens you know no reason to come back if you play well from the start and uh, you know you just win the game in the first place so I'm gonna skip through this part because these kinds of these kinds of videos like I said they're not like a build order guide videos um, they're more so just explaining the the little things you or little things kind of big things but uh, they might be little that you guys maybe miss out or don't know about so this is something that i wanted to discuss and i feel like uh comeback is a great mechanic in aoe 4 and it's it's probably one of the best comeback potentials out of any rts game th that i've played most games in rts's when you get far behind uh, you're pretty much dead because you're just going to lose to the opponent's main army or your economy is just going to be complete trash and there's not much you can do and I think AoE uh, has a great way to come back into the games and uh, kind of try to come back from that. So anyway, let's skip this through. Uh, it starts off pretty normal. I played China on Tri-Arabia. He played uh, French. Starts off pretty normal, like I said. Um, you know, we're both just building stuff, but at a point it goes really bad for me. And I get pretty far behind. So we're going to continue from that point. Until then, we're just going to kind of skip through... My god, the scout's whistling the whole time. Um, anyway, I built Barbican here to protect the, the double gold, and I protect the wood line as well. I protect this side of the map completely. And then my food is protected by the TC itself, so I thought that's a good BBQ place. I'm building some spears, and the damage kind of starts going from the get-go. Uh, like, he keeps forcing me to move my workers. He keeps forcing me to... You know, every time you move workers, it might not seem like a big deal. But it kind of adds up. He puts pressure here really fast with his archer and knight. I only have spearmen right now, so it already starts going pretty awkward. I, I misplayed this beginning a little bit regarding my macro. At this point, I should have archers as well, but I don't. So there's this awkward, like me just taking damage, me moving workers. Every time he shoots, my workers get lower on health, and obviously eventually that's gonna bite me in the butt. Um, I moved my workers here, so the problem is he has now more archers, so he keeps shooting me at my food, and you know, like I said, at this point it's already not looking good. Like at this high level, technically I didn't lose uh, any workers. You can see I'm one worker behind, but I have Imperial, three Imperial officers, so uh, because of the Song Dynasty, right? I have faster villager production. But all these things like uh, make me move workers and stuff, I slowly start falling behind and he's slowly gonna start picking up villagers as you see there. So I'm gonna speed up a little bit more till we're at a disaster point. Uh, some would say a point of no return and where a lot of people love to say GG this game is over. Um, all right, so this is the point where I think I stopped making units because I thought he might be transitioning. I saw a lot of workers of gold and actually, yeah, I think I, I thought that he is, um, he's going to go castle because he has 11 on gold, but then I see he had double stables and I start producing units again, uh, but it's, you know, I stop production for a little bit and he will just overwhelm me in a second. I have to go from food all the way up, which leaves me uh, further exposed. And this is where it just goes from bad to uh, to worse. 
Um, he is now ahead in workers, which I have Song Dynasty, so that shouldn't be the case. He goes here, I manage to kind of defend, and I go castle. And uh, while that is all great, you know, you can say, even with all damage taken, I got castle. Uh, if you look at the unit count, this is his army, 23 archers, 10 knights, and I have 5 spearmen, 21, um, whatever they're called. So, when I saw this, uh, I just had the, uh, the Simpsons thing in my head. I'm in danger! And uh, indeed I was in danger. So here he charges, I have 5 spearmen which we can pick up really easily. And fast forward, I try to kite. You know, like, this is the point at high level games where the game is over. Like, if, if the opponent is running around your main TC and you have 0 units out, uh, that's a pretty bad position, right? Uh, if you look at the worker count, it's uh, pretty equal, but I have zero army and he has 28. So, uh, not to mention, by the way, my workers here are idle. So this is, like, bad, okay? Like, workers idle, I am not gathering food, I don't have any food, right? The food is here, the food is here, the food is here. So I have zero food, I have uh, zero food income right now, I think this is the last coming in. And as you can see, I have a lot of food though, because of the buff recently to deer and also the Imperial officers doing work. But that will slowly turn into nothing. Right now, the only thing that I'm mining is gold. I'm not getting any wood because I lost all the workers there. And he kind of backs off and I think he, yeah, he makes a ram. And this is where I'm frantically making crossbows, making palace guards, and just kind of trying to you know, trying to get any units out. I put everything on wood. I need to put 42 on wood because I need to get to farms. Because I can't get this food because it's too far out, right? He gets my village here. He starts working on TC. He dives here again. You know, I lose a bunch more units. I lose Imperial officers. I get nested bees out. And I do a bunch of, uh, a bunch of farming, brother. Really. But, my TC dies here. And... I start losing production buildings. And I think we're gonna pause soon and kinda start the replay finally. Okay. So, this is the situation. I am extremely supply capped, as you can see. Um, my TC is gone. I don't have a second TC. I have one Imperial officer. I am only gaining food from these farms. A lot of the villagers are hurt. There's knights here. Um, farms here are sad. I lost the production building. I lost two villages, like I said. I have no stone for second TC. Uh, the upgrades, I have plus one, plus one. And I have three nested bees. That's it. He has the whole map. So he can do whatever he wants. And he's getting castle. So I'm not even like ahead on tech. He's getting castle right now. So... If we look at the worker count, it's 62 versus 46, uh, plus he has the full map control. So, <laughs> people in Twitch are typing GG, you guys can see it if you're watching on YouTube. Uh, so this is, needless to say, extremely bad position, like I need to spend so much wood to repair this, and I think I run out of wood and then I have to wait to repair this. Uh, I need wood for farms, but I also need wood for a second TC, I need wood for production buildings, so like I said, it's a bad position, you get it. So what is my thought process here? Well, if you look at my vision, uh, I see that, uh, if you look at the minimap, I see a lot of red on the map, I see a lot of red on the bottom, I see knights on the top, and I'm stuck in my base. So, the one good thing I have going for me, every time you're behind, you gotta see, say, okay, what, what do I have going for me? So I have going for me that I have farms, 15, it's not a lot, but I have some. I have two golds here, I have stone, I have stone, and wood is kind of tricky because he has units in both my woodlands, but what I do have going for me is somewhat decent uh, uh, location of resources, and luckily I don't need a lot of food to produce anything because I don't have production buildings because they died, you know, so it's kind of like, uh, it's good and bad. So I have three nest of bees, and siege is a great way Siege, Cavalry, and Runbys are the best way to come back into the game. Um, 
there's simply no other way. Like you have to either run by if you have cavalry, like right now instead of the siege if I had six, seven knights, you can't defend with them. You have to counterattack, right? Because if you fight knights into this, like yeah, you'll kill archers, but then by the time you counterattack, he's gonna have spears. So your best bet is to counterattack and do as much damage. Same here, if you ran knights into here, you only trade against his knights. You need to do some eco damage in order to come back. Just killing units is not worth Unless you kill units and lose nothing, then it's obviously, um, then it's worth. So, for example, making uh, a man at arms, not palace guards, man at arms and crossbows, that's not gonna get you back into the game. That's gonna enable you to defend, but you're not gonna win, right? I'm not gonna win by making uh, a man at arms and crossbows because he has better economy, so he will just steamroll me with whatever. So, this is what I do I do a little bit of a mix of both. Uh, you will see me soon. I will keep making siege, and I think I will go for stone very soon to try get a keep. Keep is also very uh, good defensively, and it enables you to have a defense point and have your opponent not focus on killing you, but focus on destroying the keep. So if they want to do that, they need to get a trebuchet. If they get a trebuchet, uh, they're very expensive. They need siege workshops. So you're slowing down the game for yourself. You're you're kind of putting a, a a break on the opponent's push. Because if I put a keep here, he can't just roll in knights. Like, they're all gonna die to the keep. So, basically, if you make a keep, you're buying yourself time to prolong the game and have higher chance of comeback. Like, if I attack now, my chances of comeback are like 1%. Every moment the game goes, my chances of comeback are, are higher and higher. Because there's more things I can do, I'm getting more free time, I'm getting more units, and... The opponent, especially if he plays French, that's not greatest in Imperial, and uh, Chinese is. He also has less uh, less of a good chance to to actually win in that late game, even if he's uh, a little bit ahead. So, like I said, run buys and siege. Siege because they have AOE damage. Um, you know, if he stacks 15 crossbows here, if he has 30 crossbows and I got 15, if he stacks 30... And s 2 bs get a good shot, suddenly I kill 15 crossbows and suddenly the army supply is even, right? Uh, and that's why cavalry goes for the workers and then siege can uh, make a quick work uh, for the army. So, let's go. So here he attacks and as you can see, he just lost two knights because I had vision. He ran in, tried to do damage and he's focusing too much. He did damage. And he's focusing too much on trying to do more damage instead of uh you know trying to get some kind of keep himself and push off of that he he keeps trying to brute force it with units and my army is made to deal with that like my army's crossbow clockwork nest of bees so whenever he comes with knights they're very easy to just get completely destroyed so uh a good comp for him would be, if he wants to do this, uh, would be horsemen and not knights, because knights would actually die faster to this comp. Another thing is um, going for relics and hoping that I get them before he can, because I need any type of passive income, any type of uh, economy uh, or economic advantage I can get. And relics are a great way to obviously get that passive income, and if you take that for yourself, you're also taking it away from him. So in a way, you're killing his workers by taking the relics for yourself while boosting your economy. That's how you should look at it. Because if I don't take them, he's gonna take them very soon, right? So he's gonna be further ahead. But if I take them first, I get a villager boost and he doesn't, he remains the same. Show us income per minute, sure. So as you can see here, I'm very focused on wood. Uh, I have no gold income, I just put workers there. So I have half the food income, he's mining some stone, he's mining a lot of gold, and I'm mining way more wood, but I think the wood is about to decline. He's still doing raids, and I'm slowly rebuilding production and rebuilding everything else. So again, my army is not made right now to um, a fight, go out on the map and fight. I can't fight, I'm aware of that. A supply is 100 versus, or 98 versus 76. So what I'm trying to do is just not take more damage and try to prolong the game as much as I can. I try to take the relic, unfortunate, uh, Bonk runs into uh, the things. He goes for another raid here. 
luckily for me, there's no units there. He goes for the siege. I managed to get a repair. And he loses four more knights. Now, that's four knights, and I killed two here earlier. So it might not seem like a big deal. Oh yeah, and I cleaned up knights here. It might not seem like a big deal, because I'm just killing units, but I just killed about 12 knights, right? And that is a huge, huge amount of units. I did lose, I think, three or four crossbows here, maybe a bit more. But for me, that's worth, because knights are the most dangerous uh, units right now. What I'm looking for is a straight-up slow fight. I'm not looking for fast-paced multitasking everywhere, because I don't have enough units to do that. And my army is immobile, so I'm trying to force my opponent into a, a straight-up fight, uh, a one-on-one -on -one fight, where we're not going around and, and splitting armies too much. Like, I want my main army to stick together, because that's what it's built for. And him, because he has knights, it's made for raiding, so he's splitting his army. Now, he gets some units here. Uh, I send more monks, and luckily for me, he didn't go for uh, monks immediately. He has a monastery now. I'm not sure where his monks are going, but I managed to pick up this relic. I managed to pick up another relic over here, and I see that he's setting up some kind of, um, you know, he's setting up like a staging ground to push into my base with Siege Workshop. And I know that this is the point where I need to make, start making Spring Alts and I need to make Trebuchets to destroy his uh, towers, keep, whatever else. And again, my priority right now is just staying alive. I'm not trying to kill anything, I'm not trying to win anywhere. So, Chinese, ha like, whenever you play from these kinds of situations, you gotta play to your Civ's advantage. My Civ's advantage is that the Siege has more health. So that's what I'm trying to force my opponent into doing, right? Um, he is French, so his cavalry is really good. So he's trying to force the cavalry fights, and I'm doing my best to not do that. I'm doing my best to just defend and not, into, not engage into those kinds of things. Now, I mentioned earlier one of the ways to come back is cavalry. Luckily, if you're playing Chinese, you don't need cavalry uh, because you have palace guards. Palace Guards, for those that don't know, are basically men-at-arms. They're special units for Chinese. They have uh, less armor, but they're much faster than men-at-arms. So, if you look, they're, um, you won't see it here because they're running with crossbow. Crossbow is slowing them down. Um, their movement speed is 1.38 tiles, and cavalry is 162. Obviously, cavalry is faster, but uh, Palace Guards would out will outrun anything that's not cavalry. So, they're actually a great cheap unit that you can do a lot of run buys with and the best part is you don't need to send 20 of them you can just send a couple because one of the ways that you come come back into the game is distract your opponents from multiple sides and you know you kill a worker here you kill a worker there he drops off macro on the other side because you're attacking so many places then you engage the main army while he's not looking and all these things you kind of overwhelm his brain with different actions on the map, and then he loses focus while I'm just shift queuing palace guards or shift queuing cavalry and putting all my focus into my main army while he has to shift his focus from, uh, you know, main army to the harassment to losing villagers and so on and so forth. And also when you're in this kind of position that he is, you don't wall off because you have the whole map. Like right? if you look from his point of view, right? He, he has a lot of the map, like he he's in front of my base, he's chilling. What he could have done better is placed earlier towers on the top side and bottom side to make sure he has full vision. But, like I said, comebacks are very hard and they require both good play from you and some mistakes from your opponent, as any great comebacks do. So here I'm building spears, I'm building some... Uh, I'm building spears just in case he doesn't rush my siege because I still see his own knights. And I'm still building palace guards. So from here on out, what I'm going to do is I see siege. So I'm like, okay, we're doing the siege versus siege on the front. He's going to try to push. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a mix of spears and, men, and palace guards. And I'm going to just send them around and harass as much as I can. And the moment they're hitting, I'm going to engage his main army. And I'm going to keep doing this until I get a, a very beneficial trade that will perhaps equalize me in the game. I'm still 15 workers behind. Um, because I'm on one TC, going to TC would be very greedy and very risky because uh, I need as many units as possible. And I think I just added this TC like maybe a minute ago. So when I defended the initial attack, 
I couldn't make insta second TC because first of all, I had no food. So sometimes what I see people do is they make an insta second TC when they're defending something and they just die right after. You got to do it at a proper time when you feel secure. And this is definitely a point where I felt secure that I can't die, but I'm not in a great spot yet. So this is where I'm trying to just boom, tech up, uh, you know, regarding my units. Uh, get more workers and just kind of slowly spread out on the map like I can't just go here and place a mining camp right I gotta slowly push out and I gotta make sure there's no run buys on my side so if you look at my vision not great so that's why I'm putting a tower right here to just gain that more of that vision and just be able to track his uh, army a little bit better so here the palace guards are arriving and uh, obviously you send the palace guards if you scouted the map initially, uh, you will know where the gold ba gold veins are. So I sent the palace cards from the north side because there's gold here, there's gold here, and there's two golds here. Uh, so he mined out the first gold, and I knew that he's going to be mining gold in one of these four locations. So I don't need to wonder where his food villagers are. I know where his gold villagers will be. So I just go for that instead. Uh, also, gold denies, you know, uh, siege making, night making, upgrades, so it denies quite a bit. And this is the beginning of the comeback. Look what happens. He suddenly shifts his attention with knights here. So then I know, okay, knights are not here, so maybe I can poke the front. And I realized that he had no clue about this run by, which means he has no vision, no towers. So then I start sending more and more and more run bys. He comes here, and I think I split, yeah, I split the palace guards in three. A lot of people, what they do is they just A move the units, and then they shift click back for the units to basically kill the units and then come back. So what I do is I split palace guards into three. Um, he obviously, you know, is a good player, so he just uh, splits his units as well and follows. But the amount of times where I save a lot of my units by doing this, and then I just shift queue them into another mining camp, or just shift queue them like from here, over here, and then back, and still do damage is uh, very, very high. So he, he follows all three, but that's something you can also do. Crossbow finds a tower being built here, so I deny that, and he denies my tower on this side. So if you look at my vision right now, I got some scouting, you know, I know he's getting deer here, I know his gold is here, I know he's trying to set up like a perimeter around my base, and I see a treb plus Siege Workshop. Siege Workshop being here uh, tells me that he's very committed to this and that he either has only this Siege Workshop or maybe another one behind. So if I break this, I will be ahead on Siege because he's trying to end the game. Um, he tries to do a run by here and this is the point where I have to slowly expand and, you know, do something because I can't just stay in my base forever. He's just going to overwhelm me with resources. So. What I did here is I have 1.1k stone, so instead of making a keep here that I thought I would win the main engagement fight because I have anti-knight uh, units, instead of making a keep here and that keep just dying, I wanted to go for a little bit of a more aggressive approach and try to put a problem on his side of the map. So I did exactly that. Uh, he starts moving his archers, but it's a little bit too slow because uh, Chinese workers build extremely fast. So I just plop down a keep where not only I will deny his gold, but I will secure stone, secure another gold for myself, and kind of block off this part of the map where it's inaccessible. So you get access to this tree line, this tree line, this tree line, this stone, and it also shifts his attention from my base to maybe another place. And what I do at the same time, because I know he's going to be micring here, I know that he's going to be uh, looking here. What I do, and this is what I was talking about earlier, you distract the opponent. And what I do now is I shift Q to Spring Alts onto his Spring Alts because I know that his attention is somewhere else, which was right here, as you can see on his camera. He's looking here. And he is getting attack notifications at three different spots. Meanwhile, what's happening is my spring alts are farming in siege. And I'm using my four villagers to repair spring alt shots from his towers. And suddenly, he's like 
that was I'm about to get a great engage here, right? Because he's charging in, my crossbows are kind of caught. But he lost three Springles, a trebuchet, and I think he loses another Springle here. And what this enables me is to transition into a trebuchet and start working on these towers. And this move might seem random. This move might seem uh, like, why would you place keep there, you know? But when you're in these kinds of situations, sometimes you have to do a little bit something, a little bit something risky in order to come back. And playing it safe won't really work every time. So here, I get a keep, he gets an engage, I put my villagers inside. And again, I thought I traded pretty well here. Like, he can't fight under a keep with these units. Especially Chinese keep, because it has that, uh, that special shot. He tries putting his own keep, again, he loses a couple of workers. And the best part is, look what happens now. This keep could have been here, right? and pushing me, but instead he made a keep on his own to defend my push. So suddenly the game shifted. In just 20 seconds, the game shifted from him about to make a keep here, push and finish, to now he's like, oh shit, I have to secure golds, because this gold is expiring, he has this gold, but this is two golds that are getting denied from him. So suddenly the, the game has shifted completely, and then he looks at the front, he sees the, siege, he sees the siege is lost, tries to chase down my siege, which I think doesn't work, if I remember correctly. I just tried to tank for my siege with villagers, because one thing I have going for me now is the siege advantage. So, I killed all of his siege, so I know that I have a siege advantage, and I don't want to lose that. Like, that, that's something I have finally going for me. I'm ahead there, so I can't lose that. So he goes in, I target fire the archers with nest of bees, uh, workers, some crossbows, palace guards are working on the knights, and I have Springle in place in this tower. And not only he doesn't get any siege, he loses all the knights. And now if you look at the supply, 88 workers to 88, he has less army than I do. It's 38 army for me, 27 from him. And let's remember, my TC was dead. He, lo he killed two villages, I was extremely supply blocked, I had no food income, he destroyed my production buildings, and now we're in a situation where I'm ahead. And this happened literally in one minute. And it all started with placing keep here. If you look at anywhere else in the map, another option would be to place keep down there, but that only secures gold for me, doesn't do anything to him, right? But putting a keep here is very dangerous. Like this is something that needs to be taken care of because there's also a gold here that I'm securing for myself indirectly with this keep. Because opponent will not go around your keep just to attack here because if he gets caught, all the army will die. So opponents will not run past your keep to access another area unless they're sure they're gonna have a winning army and that's very hard to know in the game itself. Meanwhile, I got some palace guards here. Uh, you know, again, doing some more harassment, getting those uh, attack animations in the map. Now, if you look, uh, this is where opponent's brain starts getting overwhelmed. And this is uh, a thing as well when you play, this happens to no matter what level you are. If you look from his point of view, he's getting a ping here. He's getting a ping here constantly that is very distracting. He's getting a ping here, and he's getting a ping on the front. So his brain is slowly getting like overloaded with information because he needs to macro, he needs to make units, he needs to choose which units to make, he needs to do upgrades, he needs to look where he's getting attacked because some of these pings are the same, but while playing in a game, it's very hard to say which pings are new and which pings are old on the map. So right now, these palace guards are just going in. Look at the mining time lost. He's running, and someone might be like, why is he not uh, just putting them in TC, you know? It's because he's getting attacked at four different sides. So, and again, these two guys, they're not going to kill 20 workers. That's not the point. And Wolf is also helping me out here. The point isn't killing 20 workers here. The point is forcing your opponent to do mistakes. And by making your opponent multitask, you force him to make mistakes. If you look at his camera, look at his camera. He's all over the place. 
Look, he's losing some units here. He's looking at the keep because he's getting attacked. He looks back, AFK villagers. He looks there, there's a wolf attacking. Suddenly, you know, there's some units maybe moving on the bottom side of the map that you miss, right? I mean, there, there weren't any, but if there were, even though you have vision, you might miss them because there's so much shit going on around the map. You know, I run in here, cause more chaos. This palace guard dies. All the villagers are low HP. A lot of idle time, right? Meanwhile, again, look at the pings on the map. Those are all his pings getting attacked, not mine, right? My ping, you know what my pings look like? I'm getting pinged here. That's it. Look. Look, this is my map. I'm getting pinged that I'm getting attacked by keep. And I don't need to pay attention because I know it's a keep attacking keep. That's it. On his side, it's a different story. So. Here he starts doing a trebuchet. I make a safety keep. Because I thought I was in decent enough position where I don't need to risk losing the game. And I start working on his tower slowly. He makes some horsemen, but uh, I already have spears. And I have nest of beasts to protect. And this is also like six horsemen. Like, you're not gonna run in with six horsemen against this and, and like, do anything, right? I mine out the stone. Um... I start mining the gold here. Oh yeah, I lose villagers here, which is really bad by me. Um, worker count, 101 for him, 99 for me, so pretty equal. I'm still working on these towers, and I'm slowly kind of gaining more and more ground. So if you look now, my vision, I kind of almost have half the map, right? Three minutes ago, I was only here. Now I'm getting more vision. And now, as I'm gaining more ground, Look at this. Run by, come in and hot. Uh, I'm pushing through the middle. Run by over here. I'm recapping the sacred side. And I'm just doing as many things to attack him at the same time. You even see, these, these run bys are like pathetic. You know what I mean? Like, this is two palace guards. This is one palace guard. Like, these are not massive raids to kill all the villagers. These are just to overwhelm the opponent so I can actually do the main engages better than he can. And again, if you look at his vision, he has almost a whole map. But during all of that, he missed these villagers or these palace guards running through. So again, two palace guards here, he queues up houses, suddenly those houses are not built, suddenly the supply block is real, because in his brain he queued up the houses, then he runs away, the houses are idle, he gets supply blocked, Another little advantage. I recap the sacred site. No more gold on that side. Uh, he's mining stone on this side. I destroy the tower. I do the harassment. And again, you know, someone might look at this and be like, oh, what is he doing? He is losing villagers. And from his point of view, this is how that looks like. He's trying to harass. He's getting pinged on, on five different places in the map right now. By the way, his workers, look, he's housed. Remember what I told you? He's still supply blocked. He's making two more houses, even though he has three queued up here. Villagers are dying here. Um, villagers are about to come here and start dying to this palace guard. Villagers were getting harassed here. And suddenly it's kind of looking, you know, kind of looking like a, like a normal game in a way. He tries to do harassment here, gets denied. Look, palace guards on this side. Why is he on this side? Because he's probably running out of gold here. More palace guards arrive. More idle time. And he kind of goes for what I like to call like a, like a, not tilt, but like a... Uh, there, there's a thing where your brain gets overwhelmed and, and you're like getting harassed everywhere. You just say fuck it and you just go for it. Um, and this is one of those moments. He's being, being harassed on every side, and maybe he feels he's getting too far behind, so he goes for the attack, which catches me off guard. He kills a treb here. But my army at this point is way bigger and way better. Like, if you look at my army compared to his, it's not even close. Again, pings are going around. I'm still doing harassment. This palace guard, Chad, is just killing the villagers the whole time. And because I know where mining camps are, right, because I scouted the start of the game, I'm just sending palace guards there. 
And this is where I start securing the map. So I'm trying to narrow the fight. So we fight in the middle because I know he has a lot of horsemen and best way to counter horsemen is just wall off. So he's doing some good harassment here. And I'm just pushing through the middle. I know my main army is better. Meanwhile, palace guards are still doing work everywhere. He does this run by, it doesn't do much. I send some units there. And what do I look at now? I look, okay, where can he get his gold? This should be expiring, which it is soon. So the only place he can get gold is these two gold mines and this one. There's nowhere else because those are the only ones on the map. And at the same time, I need to secure gold because I'm mining here, but this is gonna expire uh, soon. So I need to start working towards gold. And slowly, I wall up these areas because I don't want horses messing with me. I also have gold in the back, right? And I'm slowly but surely trying to deny his gold. And if you manage to do that, you manage to win the game. Here he goes in for the siege. I think he gets a good engage here. Yeah, he's killing a lot of siege with his horsemen. But I mop up all the, uh, all the horsey boys. Bottom is denied completely. I have some palace guards chilling here. He goes for a keep here. And this is kind of like a keep to delay my push and make sure he can get this gold. Because if he doesn't get a keep here or at least here, I can just attack the, the gold, right? Because this keep doesn't really protect it. Protects it from melee units, but not from siege. So he tries to get a keep here and do something. But this time around, the engage is much, much worse for him. Uh, the horses just die. Tries to get a surround. I got spears ready. And the keep goes down. I think I'm taking to yeah, I'm taking to Imperial right now. The palace guards just did a run by. Oh, they're doing a run by right now. I get to Imperial, and he GG's out. Again, if you remember where the game started and how it ended, it's. Technically, it's only like a few palace guards that did the trick. But if you take everything into consideration, you know, grabbing the relics, successfully denying all the other runbys, taking little bits of the map, you know, taking this part of the map, then suddenly these stones are open for me. And you kind of have to dissect the map and see where you're gonna push from, what you want to secure, uh, what you need to deny from the opponent. And instead of wandering around with units like, oh, I don't know where he's, uh, where he's getting his wood or I don't know where he's getting his food, just go for what you know, and that's gold. Uh, he can't mine gold at a place that doesn't exist. So um, one of the best things you can do when your opponent sieges you, even though it's scary as fuck, right? Because if your opponent is right here, sieging your base, one of the hardest things to do is give up half of your army and going around and harassing, because if the opponent attacks, you just die. So yeah, harassment, counterattacking, distracting your opponent, and just playing defensive with, with ranged units uh, is the best way to do it. Like again, if you're massing, you know, knights or men at arms or, or spears and you're just waiting, like you're not gonna win that. You're, you're forfeiting the map control. And you need to fight for the map control in these small battles and kind of get advantage anywhere you can. And I think the crucial point was probably me killing his siege here while he was distracted because that finally gave me some kind of advantage. Uh, I had less army, I had less eco, but once I killed that, I had more siege. And then I think I added another uh, two workshops and then I just committed to siege uh, because like I said, that was my advantage. And if this was a knight versus knight game, and if he had 10 knights or if he had 30 knights and I had 20 and suddenly I killed 20, then I'm gonna commit to more knights and try to overwhelm the opponent uh opponent's economy and so on and so forth but obviously because this game uh i played china and like i said china's uh, strongest point is the siege i went for that and it worked out because if you're playing french you don't want to uh be like okay we're gonna fight straight up and i'm gonna just make siege and 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 with equal numbers and win you can only win if you have more siege than chinese um but chinese obviously lacks uh in the early game a bit more so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you're watching on Twitch, we're gonna keep going. If you're watching on YouTube, let me know what kind of uh, explanation, maybe I get some ideas. Uh, someone suggested this to me yesterday, I think, in Twitch chat, like, 
Oh, that game would be good to go over uh, how you came back and, and what exactly happened. Uh, because sometimes I finish a game and I don't really know what people want to know, so let me know. Again, if you're watching on YouTube, thanks so much for watching. Uh, if you're watching on Twitch, let's keep going.